Like and subscribe on the way in the door, people. Today, uh, I come across another clip of Undisputed, Skip Bayless, Keyshawn Johnson, Michael Irvin, uh, discussing new rules that will uh, penalize, I believe, uh, both the, the team and the players for excessive resting. Uh, people who grew up watching basketball during the 80s, 90s, would you ever have guessed <laughs> that we would come to a time in the NBA where you need rules to make players play? Where you need rules to stop players from flopping? I, I wouldn't have guessed that back then. When I was watching Bulls games, uh, New York Knicks games back then, the thought never crossed my mind that someday the NBA would be full of soft players and soft-thinking managers and teams and a uh, commissioner <laughs> that they would be uh, seem like destroying the game that I was once so passionate about. But uh, so let's talk about this a little bit. Uh, first of all, this whole idea of resting players which Keyshawn Johnson seems to kind of be talking out both sides of his mouth. Uh, on one side, he's talking about the fans, and he understands it from that side. Uh, but on the other side, he seems to be very defending, very much defending, trying to defend the action of these players and, and coaches and team doctors who think it's cool to sit out because you're resting for a different game or because this game may seem insignificant. Uh, and Skip brought up the fact that Michael Jordan played 80 games, what, 11 times, including all 82 games, nine times. The greatest player to ever do it, the player that is responsible for these players being able to make the kind of money that they make. Uh, played 82 games, nine times, and now, you know, we got players playing, you know, 50 games and 60 games on a regular basis. I think I did a video where I said LeBron in the last, I think it's four or five years, haven't even played 60 games a season. Uh, and I just read something I believe was, was from Bleacher Report that says injuries in the 2021 season uh, – was the most in NBA history. And according to several articles, you know, the modern NBA period uh, just has more injuries. I'm going to read a little clip, read a little snippet from, from an article I found talking about why load management is a failure. It says, one reason for the failure of load management to reduce reoccurring NBA injuries is the fact that there is no substitute for in-game action when it comes to conditioning. There is, there is no doubt that most players, even when rested, keep themselves in excellent physical condition. Still, excessive time off makes them entirely unprepared for the unique strain and actual game, unique strain that actual games put on their bodies. It's possible that the load management theory just needs some adjustment, but resting a star player for 20 games clearly isn't a way to prevent reoccurring or long-term injuries. And uh, for anybody that plays sports, I don't care if you played uh, organized sports for a team or if you were just a street baller like myself who was playing, you know, between four and six days a week. You know, like when I was playing that amount of basketball on a regular basis, you know, if I took a week off for some reason, it was hard coming back. You know, you did not feel as in shape, even if you were doing other things that technically kept you in shape. Even if you were still working out or still running, playing in the game is a different thing. And I think everybody who plays sports knows this. 
playing in the game is a different thing, and the only thing that can prepare you for playing in the game is playing in the game. It's playing as many games as possible. It's playing even on those so-called insignificant games that, to me, uh, when you're talking about... First of all, when you're talking about the regular season, the regular season should be two things, right? The regular season is... is uh, Getting the record so that you know what seeds you will go in the playoffs so you can go for a higher seed in the playoffs. And the regular season is supposed to be building that continuity for the team. It's supposed to be uh, that constant, everyday uh, building of um, chemistry for the team. So that by the time you get to the playoffs, you all have played together. You've been through the ups and downs together. You kind of really know each other as a team. How can you do that with players sitting out uh, 15, 20 games a season? How can you do that? How can you build that team chemistry with players sitting out so many games a season? It's like the, the regular season, you know, you know, I'm not going to lie. I, I have no interest in watching regular season games. Regular season games is the kind of thing that, uh, you know, if I happen to catch it, you know, while I'm doing something else, then okay, I, I might watch it. Because these players don't seem to care about regular season games at all. It's hard to watch playoff games because it's just not the same. These guys don't play with the same intensity. I, Like I said, let's be real, everybody. The, the modern athlete uh, is not playing for the love of the game. Uh, so... <laughs> In an attempt to uh, defend these players, Keyshawn Johnson says, uh, you know, well, Skip talks about Michael Jordan and, and how much he played. And uh, well, Keyshawn's kind of response was, well, these players are, are doing much more. They're, they're playing all these pickup games in the offseason and doing this and doing that, blah, blah, blah. Uh, as if Michael Jordan wasn't playing all those pickup games in the offseason. Michael Jordan had the love of the game clause saying he could play whenever and wherever he wanted to. As a matter of fact, before the uh before the uh before he joined the Wizards, he got his ribs broke by a uh, Meta World Peace uh in a pickup game. Michael Jordan was always playing pickup games. So so what what's the excuse? And and this is how this is how you know uh Everything, that they don't care about the fans at all anymore. This is how you know it is strictly 100% money-based. And first of all, let's say this. The only reason they're able to keep this up is because thanks to Michael Jordan, the NBA is a worldwide game now. Because if the NBA was still mostly focused in the United States, the money would be... Uh, the money and ratings and everything would be so far down, they wouldn't be able to sustain this. But, uh, but yeah, so Keyshawn Johnson is trying to make this excuse about they do all these other things. They're not doing anything in today's NBA that wasn't going on already. Matter of fact, they're doing less. They talk about the amount of players and star players who don't practice. Well, Michael Jordan made practice feel like playoff games. This is why you see, you know, I say LeBron James is the most inconsistent superstar we've ever seen. But the reality of it is, is these superstars today are the most inconsistent group of superstars we've ever seen. These superstars today are, are the most inconsistent group of superstars we've ever seen. It's not like back in the day where, you know, it was rare to see a Larry Bird just uh, have a truly off night. Number one, because players back then understood that, hey, if my shot is not falling, I can affect the game in other ways. I'm not saying superstars didn't have bad moments. Every superstar is, but, but I'm talking about the consistency at which we see these players up and down have an unbelievable night and then have a trash night. Is much more frequent with these superstars now nowadays, um, but yeah, like I said, you know, never thought I'd live to see the day where 
the NBA has to make rules to, to force players to play when they're making more money than ever. Uh, you know, have, have to force, try to uh, make rules so that players don't flop. This is ridiculous. Fanboys? <laughs> Your king. <laughs> uh, but anyway, we going to hold up here. I just wanted to put my two cents in this whole ridiculous mess going on. Uh, like I said, I think everyone who's played the game understand that the only way you can truly condition for the game is by playing the actual game. There's no amount of uh, practice unless you practice like Michael Jordan, which we know that these players are not doing that. There, there's nothing that can prepare you for that in-game, uh, the in-game wear and tear. You know, the in-game, condi the, the condition that you have to be in to participate in the game can only be gain gained by actually participating in the games. That's why we have more injuries, people. That is simple and plain. And anybody who plays sports knows this. Like, anybody who's trying to defend this new way of thing are just fans of these stars and uh, are yes men. Anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments about this new rule that will penalize players, will penalize players and the team for resting their star players. What do you think about it? Do you think it's actually going to work? Let me know what you think in the comments. You all have a fantastic day, and I will see you next time.